Chapter 3 The Etiquette of the Seeker with His Shaykh Number 18 Considering the Shaykh's consequent status Since knowledge is not attained initially from the books, rather, it is necessary to take from Shaykh in order to perfect the keys of knowledge with him, so as to prevent yourself from tripping and slipping, and then it is incumbent upon you to take into consideration the Shaykh's consequent status, for indeed it is the token of success, acquisition, and prosperity. So make your Shaykh an object of your reverence, honor, appreciation, and courtesy. Therefore, take from the comprehensive aspects of etiquette when sitting with your shaykh or speaking to him or asking him questions and listening attentively to his answers. Also, display good etiquette with any book when turning its pages in his presence. Abstain from arguing with the intent of showing off in front of him. Do not precede him in speech or in your steps or talk excessively in his presence and do not continually interrupt him while he is speaking or during his lecture. Do not continually pester him for an answer to your question and avoid extensive questioning, especially in the presence of an audience, for indeed this attracts self-delusion on your behalf and causes the shaykh to become bored. Avoid calling him by his first name or by his surname, as one would say, Oh, shaykh so-and-so, rather you should, you should say, Ya shaykhi, oh my shaykh, ya shaykhana, oh our shaykh, and do not call him by name, that is more elevated in manner. Also, avoid addressing him with the term address ant, you, or calling him from a distance without necessity. Consider the etiquette that Allah mentioned with the one who taught the mankind all good, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in his saying, لا تجعلوا دعاء الرسول بينكم كدعاء بينكم كدعاء بعضكم بعضا. Make not the calling of the messenger among you as the call of of one of one of you to another. That is Surah An-Nur 2463. Similarly, just as it is not befitting to call your biological father by saying, oh so and so, or oh my father so and so, and mention his name, then it is not befitting with your shaykh. So adhere to preserving the awe of the gathering and displaying rejoice and benefit derived from the lessons. If a mistake from the shaykh becomes apparent to you or a delusion on his behalf, then let that not degrade the shaykh in your eyes. For such would be the cause of you becoming deprived from his knowledge and who is safe from falling into mistakes. So be careful not to interact with him in a way that irritates him. And from this is what the muwallidun call the battle of nerves, which means to test the capacity of the shaykh's knowledge and patience. If, however, you decide to change to another shaykh, then seek his permission, for this is more befitting to his consequent status and more likely to the preserved love and compassion in his heart for you and so on. Through the list of the list of etiquette that is shown by the heart to every blessed and prosperous person out of fulfillment of the shaykh's rights through his religious fatherhood, or what is referred to in some laws as cultural suckling, and referred to it as religious fatherhood is more befitting and leaving the other one is more appropriate. Know that your success is dependent upon how much you take his status into consideration and barely considering it as a sign of your failure. Caution, I ask Allah to grant you refuge from the doings of the A'jam A'jim, and the followers of Sufi orders and the present-day innovators. From total submission to the mashayikh that exceeds the boundaries of shari'iyah, from licking the hands and kissing the shoulders and grabbing the right hand with both right and left hands when giving salam, behavior that resembles adults when they show off affection to children, and bowing at the same greeting, and using slack phrases that indicate lowliness such as Sayyidi, Mawla, O Master, and other such statements used by servants and slaves, refer to what the Al-A'lamat Salafi Sheikh Muhammad al Bashir al Ibrahim al Jaza al Jazairi, Rahimahullah, said in his book Al Busair, for indeed it is exceeding in its content. Number 19. Your capital, O seeker, is from your Shaykh. Follow his pious manners and noble character. As for acquisition and dictation of knowledge, then that is extra profit. However, do not be taken by an exuberant love of your sheikh, lest you fall into abomination without realizing that all those around you 
realize. And do not imitate him in his voice, tone, walk, movements, or appearance, for he did not become a great sheikh just by this. So do not fall by following him in this. Number 20. The sheikh's enthusiasm in his lessons. This is dependent upon the seeker's capacity to listen, frame of mind, and how much he becomes emotionally involved with the sheikh in his lesson. For this reason, beware of becoming a tool for cutting off his knowledge by being lazy, slack, or slouching and allowing the mind to wander during his lessons. Al Khatib al Baghdadi rahimahullah said the right of benefit should go to its zealous wanter and not presented except to the person interested in it. So if the muhaddith slees, slack, from the listener then let him become silent for some of the people of culture said the enthusiasm of the speaker depends upon the capacity of the listener he then narrated through his chain of narrators to Zaid ibn Wahab that he said Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said narrated to the audience as long as they glance at you with their eyes and if you see slackness from them then halt number 21 Writing what the sheikh says during the lesson or revision. Understand that this differs from one sheikh to another, and it has etiquette and a condition. As for the etiquette, you should notify your sheikh that you are going to write or that you have written revisions form. As for the condition, you should indicate that you wrote it from listening to what he said in his lesson. Number 22. Acquiring knowledge from the Mubtadi'ah, an innovator. Be aware of the Mubtadi'ah, Abu Jahal, the one who has been touched by deviancy in his creed and engulfed by the clouds of fiction. He who allows himself to be ruled by his vain desires and calls it logic and diverts from the text of the Quran and Sunnah. After all, where is logic to be found except in the text of the Quran and Sunnah? He also holds fast to weak hadiths and distances himself from the authentic hadiths. They are also referred to as Ahlus Shubuhat, dubious people, and Ahlul Ahwa, the people who follow their vain desires in the religion. And for this reason, Ibn al Mubarak rahimahullah, used to call them Al Asagir, the small ones. Al Dhahabi rahimahullah, said, If you see the innovative Mutakallim saying, Leave out the Quran and Sunnah and bring forth logic, then know that he is Abu Jahal. And if you see the one on the spiritual path who claims that by practicing a set of prescribed forms of innovated worship, he will attain oneness with Allah, the Sufis saying, Leave us from knowledge that is transmitted the Quran and Sunnah and bring forth taste and ecstasy of passion, then know that he is Iblis, Shaytan become manifest in human form or has become incarnate within him so if you become cowardly then run away from him otherwise wrestle him down and sit on his chest with your knee and read ayatul kursi and strangle him he also said rahimahullah and i read in the handwriting of a sheikh muwaffaq is saying we heard his lesson such as ibn abi asrun with my brother abi umar then we stopped going to his lessons i heard my brother say i entered his house after that and he asked why have you cut yourselves off from me so i replied some people say that you are ash'ari so he said by allah i am not an ash'ari this is a rough meaning of the story it was narrated that Malik rahimahullah said knowledge hadith is not taken from four. A foolish person who publicizes his foolishness, even if he was the most prolific narrator of hadith. A person of bid'ah who calls to it. A person who lies in his speech with people, even if I don't accuse him of lying in hadith. And a noble pious worshipper, if he does not memorize precisely what he narrates. O oh, you seeker of knowledge, if you are in a position of freedom of choice, then do not take from a mubtadi' be he a rafidi, a khariji, a murji, a qadari, a quburi, or etc. For you will never reach the level of knowledgeable men, correct in your creed, strong in your association with Allah, with strong vision, and following the tracks, except by abandoning the mubtadi' and their innovations. The books of biographies and holding fast to the sunnah are abundant with accounts of Ahlus Sunnah finishing off the mubtadi' and renouncing their innovation, and distancing away from them as a sound person would distance himself from a sick, deceased person. There are so many stories and accounts that would take a long time to recount, but it gives me pleasure to mention a few of them for the Salaf used to seek reward with Allah in disregarding them and humiliating them and rejecting the Mubtadi' and his innovation. They also used to warn against becoming associated with them or seeking their opinion or eating with them. For the Mubtadi' and Sunni should be fa so far apart that each of them cannot see the fire of other. 
There were amongst the Salaf those who never used to pray among the funeral of the Mubtadir and would be seen leaving the funeral ceremony. It was also witnessed that Al Al Alama Al Shaykh Muhammad ibn Ibrahim abstained from funeral over a Mubtadir. Also, there were among the Salaf those who used to prohibit from praying behind them or mentioning their innovations because the heart is weak and doubtful affairs are swift in abductions of hearts. Sahal ibn Abdullah at tustari used to hold the opinion that it is not permissible for a mubtadir to eat flesh of an animal that died without being sla slaughtered according to Islamic sharia ah, in case of a dire necessary necessity because he is a transgressor transgressor due to Allah saying but if one is forced by necessity without will without without willful obedience nor transgressing due limits Surah Al-Baqarah 173 And he is a transgressor with his bid'ah They also used to banish them from their gatherings As in the story of Imam Malik With the one who asked him about the way in which Allah established himself upon the throne In which after he made his renowned statement And I suspect you of being associated with bid'ah He ordered for him to be banished There are numerous accounts of the Salaf turning away from the Mubtadi'a and abandoning them out of fear of their evil and in order to control the spread of their bid'ah and to dishearten them from spreading it since the association of a Sunni with a Mubtadi'a is a testimony from his credibility and for the beginner and the Ammi commoner. The Ammi is derived from Amma, blindness, and on most common occasions he is in the hands of those who guide him. Similar events can also be found in the books written on the science of hadith, the etiquette of seeking knowledge, the declarating, the declaring, the narrator as being reliable or unreliable. O oh, you seeker, be Salafi, adhering to the path and beware of the Mubtadi'a lest they divert you, for they employ many ways to target and deceive people and fabricate a paved way to it by using honeyed speech. And in fact, it is honey right in Arabic left to right. The downpour of tears, elegant dress, deceiving people with their imagination, astonishing people with their miracles, and licking the hands and kissing of the shoulders, etc. There is nothing more behind all this than the craving for bid'ah and the dust of tribulation that he plants within your hearts. And he uses you in his company and by Allah the blind person at heart is not suited to lead the blind and guide them. As for taking from the scholars of the sunnah, the lick of the honey without asking, take knowledge from them without worrying. And may Allah guide you to prosperity, so that you may drink from the prophetic inheritance in its pure state, otherwise let he who wishes to cry, cry over the religion. What I have mentioned to you is when you have freedom and choice. If, however, you are studying academically and you have no choice in him, in whom you can take from, then be wary of him and seek refuge in Allah from his evil and be alert to any infiltration, since, they, since the saying goes, Pick the fruit and throw the wood in the fire, and do not become fatigued by seeking knowledge, for I fear that it'll be considered as turning one's back and fleeing from the battlefield at the time of fighting. In this situation, you are only obliged to know his case, avoid his evil, and unveil him. One example is when Abu Abdul Rahman al Mukri narrated from a murji'ah. It was said to him, Why do you narrate from a murji'ah? So he replied, I trade the meat for the bones. Al Mukri narrated from him without deceit or anonymity because he made it clear by saying, When he narrated from him, and he was a murji'ah. And what I wrote for you here is from the principles of your creed, the creed of Ahlus Sunnah wal Jama'ah, as was written by Sheikh Al Islam Abi Uthman Ismail ibn Abdul Rahman al Sabuni in his Salafi Aqidah. He said, And they hate Ahlul Bid'ah, and those who innovated into the religion what is not of it, and they do not love them, or befriend them, or listen to their speech, or sit with them, or argue with them in the affairs of religion, nor do they debate them. And they protect their ears from their falsehood, because if it were to pass through the ears and recite in the heart it would be harmful and would lead to evil whisperings and thoughts and on this Allah revealed his statement and when you see those who engage in a false conversation about our verses by mocking at them then stay away from them till they turn to another topic Surah Al-An'am 68 it was narrated from Sulaiman ibn Yasar that a man by the name of Subayr arrived at Medina and began to ask about the Mutashabbih. 
the unclear verses of the Qur'an. So Umar sent for him and he had prepared the date palm benches, branches for him where he arrived. When he arrived, Umar said to him, Who are you? He replied, I am Subayr, the slave of Allah. So Umar took one of his branches and struck him with it until his head bled. Then he left him till his head healed and resumed striking him again and allowing him to become healed. Then he called for him to strike him again. So Subayr said, If you wish to kill me, then kill me in a beautiful manner. So he gave him permission to go back to Salan and wrote to Abu Musa al-Ash'ari in Yemen, None of the Muslims are allowed to sit with him. Narrated by Ad-Darimi. It was also said that he was accused of holding the belief of Khawarij. And Nawawi said in his book Al-Adhkar, the chapter of declaring innocence from the people of bid'ah and sin. And he mentioned the hadith of Abu Musa that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam declared um, himself innocent of the woman who wails loudly when calamity befalls her, and the woman who shaves her hair when calamity befalls her, and the woman who tears her clothes when calamity befalls her, agreed upon. There is also a narration when Ibn Umar declared his innocence of al qadariya narrated by a Muslim. However, the issue of abandoning the Mubtadi is based upon considering the benefits and increasing them and deterring evil and decreasing it and the permissibility of abandoning the Mubtadi is based upon this principle as Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah clarified in many of his books. The Mubtadi only increase in numbers and emerge if knowledge becomes scarce and ignorance becomes widespread. And it is about them that the Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said, for it is, is for it is this category that increases and emerges if ignorance and its people increase and where there are no people who possess knowledge of prophethood and the following of it who makes its light apparent the light which erases the darkness of misguidance and exposes all that which opposes it including lies association of false partners with Allah and contradiction so if you become strong in knowledge then subdue the mubtadi and his bid'ah with an authoritative and eloquent tongue and peace be with you